Hello and a very warm welcome to another episode of Culinary Travels. I'm Chef Robert Harland and I'll be your host today. We're here today at the Institute for Culinary Arts at the University of St. Lasalle. And I have with me here today the pleasure of introducing Richard, Chef Richard Anayan, who is the founding chef and the director and the mastermind behind uh, the Institute. Uh, Come, Robert. Thank you. Welcome to the show. And Chef Andrew Go. And uh, Andrew will be the one today to do our demonstration. We are featuring the China, China national dish of Peking duck. And uh, Andrew here is a dab hand. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, but before we go any further with the Peking duck, uh, let's have a chat with uh, Chef Richard about the Institute of Culinary Arts. Uh, Chef Richard, uh, I of course am very familiar with the Institute of Culinary Arts, or ICA as it's known. Of course, you're uh... Because I was in the first batch in yes, 2008, yes, yes. that's where I did my training. You made so. me proud, you made me proud. Well, it just goes <laughs> to show that uh, no discrimination in the grounds of age here in, uh, in ICA. But uh, tell me about ICA, it's been phenomenally successful. You had... Um, We're now on batch 13. And how many students have gone through? We have almost a thousand students. A thousand students. And why has cooking all of a sudden become so popular? Um, well, first and foremost because of, well, you see it on television now. Kids are doing it. And um, uh, just no age. Anybody, any, like anyone can cook. Um, plus the prospect of getting a job is far, far better than than other most professions right now. You can go into cruise ships, you can go into resorts, you can go into hotels, you can be a private chef, you can open your own restaurant, and then it's just endless. The opportunities are just endless. Do you see this continuing, the popularity of cooking? Yes, of course. Uh, most of my students now are in the Middle East. Uh, a lot of them recently left for the US. I have currently one in North Dakota, one in Minnesota, one in Indiana, two in Chicago one in New York. Uh, they're all making a name for themselves. And it makes me really proud. Like, you know, uh, those guys were, were totally, uh, how would you call that? Some of them didn't want to go to college, but they now are making a name for themselves as chefs right. around the world. Right. So. Well, even I learned how to cook. And yes, and you are the, uh, the, uh, the shining example of that. <laughs> now, um, how long is the course at ICA? The program is uh, it's a one-year program. Uh, it, uh, it's a Mondays to Wednesdays, but in recent days we've in increased it already to four times a week. So it's Monday to Thursdays. You can choose an 8.30 to 12.30 class, or you can take the 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. class. And uh, it, what do you cover in the course? It's a diploma program. It's a diploma program which uh, covers uh, six modules. One would be on, on um, introduction, um, history, and sauces, soups. Second would be methods of cooking. Uh, third would be garde manger. The art of the cold kitchen. Fourth, pastry. Fifth would be advanced application, and sixth is uh, apprenticeship or the OJT. And do you uh, do you do all different cu cuisines or? Yes, we on the fifth module where you do advanced application, we cover all the regions, the re regional dishes, from 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 American to the French to the Japanese to Indian to Greek. Uh, we cover mostly all the all the nations of the world. And you have nationals from some of those countries coming in to teach? Yes, of course. We have uh, American chefs would come. We have a sommelier, Mr. Ciro, who comes regularly. You handling the British cuisine. Um, and then every now and then, every so often, uh, a guest from Japan would come and who would do some, some of the Japanese uh, cuisines. And then we invite, of course, local, local chefs to come and help with us. And are your students, what age group are they normally? They're not old guys like in the beginning. In the beginning, we mostly had mothers mothers, housewives, uh, career changers. Now, surprisingly, it's getting younger and younger. Uh, we had a lot of kids who doesn't want to go to college anymore, uh, would, pursue a career, uh, would pursue a career here, and are now working, while their older siblings are still in school. So, it's sort of a passion, it's really skills. And you say anyone can become a chef? Anyone can be a chef, I uh, totally believe really that. Do you really believe that? Yes, but the better chefs are the ones with, I guess, who have, you have to have a passion. Anyone can cook, I agree. But once there's a passion, once there's a, there's love for cooking, I think, you know, you can... I know some chefs who never look at a recipe book. They make oh, yes. it up as they go along. Uh, what, what's the difference between that kind of chef and the chef who takes out a copy of Mrs. Beaton and looks <laughs> at the... Uh, there are 
I think there are three things. This is just my, my there are three things. There's one, one, the ones who are really gifted. As in, you know, they never went to formal schooling, but they have the, the gift of good taste. Second would be the widow, the, the widow uh, chefs, something they learned from their grandparents and then are, are, are um, uh, handed down to generations and then they perfected it. And then third are the chefs, the chefs really, uh, who would know the difference of why does a souffle really rise or why does a cake flop. I think it's the chef, like the butchery part, uh, where do you get the tenderloin, where do you get the sirloin, where do you get the... All these things are, are in theory, are, are uh, mastered by a chef, both in theory and in practical. We're spoiled for choice in Bacolod now, there are so many uh, restaurants some of which come and go quite quickly, yes. uh, but many of which have uh, been here some time and well established now. Yeah, Bob's for example, it's a family that, that's an extension, I'm not plugging Bob's, but it's become an extension of everybody's kitchen, of everyone's kitchen. And um, I think it's also luck sometimes. Uh, Bacolod is just one of the, how would you call that, we're, we're hardest to please when it comes to food. <laughs> and as what my, my, as what someone told me, uh, uh, not so long ago that Bacolod has this thing with uh, champagne food over beer budget. So that's what we... <laughs> that's what we... Uh, I, someone said to me yesterday that the trouble with Filipino food is that all the old recipes have been lost and, they peop and people are no longer following the traditional recipes. Although I have seen many family recipe books. Would, what would you say about that? Would you say that many of the old recipes are still in? Yeah, some of the old recipes uh, are still in. Like for example, like for, for Bob's, since I know them very well, I know the family well, uh, some of the recipes are from their great-grandmothers, down to their grandmothers who really love to cook, so it's really handed down. In the case of uh, other, uh, in case of that other thing you're telling me about, uh, there are certain dishes here in Bacolod that died with them. So. Um, uh, I guess it's a refusal to share. Some did not really pass it on. Some never really even had a recipe. It's a, something done by um, uh, Paul's. It's just, uh, it's just never written down into paper and never passed on to the next generation. Some, there's plenty, I could name a few who, who, uh, whose recipes died with them. Okay. And then uh, that was never really passed on. But uh, here we are in Ica, it's uh, booming. Thank you, Robert. So you see a positive future. Yes, uh, very much so. Since uh, I'd like to believe we're the, we're the only one with a full-fledged uh, culinary school um, under, the, under the umbrella of the university and uh, being La Salle as we are, so we follow the, the, the true Christian tradition of uh, St. John Baptist de La Salle and then incorporated it into what I've learned abroad. Um, so the, from the kitchens of New York to the kitchens of Paris. Because you, you I, trained in Paris and in New York, Yes, right? and so I have brought it in here and then Taylor made it to the Ilongo to the Ilonga students, so in fact we have injected uh, a few number of recipes, Filipino and Ilonga recipes, into the program to make it uh, very much Ilonga. Yes, I remember those. Yes. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, Chef Richard, thank you very much. For being thank you also, Robert. Thank Thanks you. for visiting your school again. And uh, up next we'll be going to the uh, demo kitchen here at Ica, where uh, Chef Andrew will be demonstrating peaking duck. So please stay with us. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks very much. Now we're here in the uh, demo kitchen at Ica with uh, Chef Andrew and uh, let me tell you that uh, Chef Andrew is a damn hand at uh, making Peking duck. I've tasted his duck before. Thank you. The important thing about uh, Peking duck is the kind of duck you use. It's, this duck is not the duck you see running around in compounds or farms. This is a Peking duck. That's P-E-K-E-N. And this is the duck most suitable for um, 
heating, the Prokofiev heating duct. And um, they're now available here in Negros. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Ditas Montilia Henson um, had the uh, very good sense to buy some kits from overseas. And in her farm in Silai, in Sipalai, she is now breeding these ducks. And uh, unfortunately, she can't be with us today, but I'd like to thank her very much for letting us have some of the ducks for today's demo. Now, Chef Andrew, it's all yours now. Please tell us uh, what uh, ingredients you're going to use and uh, what the process is. Okay, so uh, first things first, we're gonna make sure the duck is clean. First, you wash it with um, clean running water. Um, and then afterwards, we're gonna need uh, this ingredients here. What have we got here? Um, we have a couple. <laughs> this will be your ginger powder, your garlic powder, your sugar, granulated, your vinegar, your hoisin sauce, your honey, um, just a few uh, tablespoons of your lemon juice, ginger, and a few scallions. The star anise. Okay. All right. So we start off with uh, trimming your duck. You want to make sure that it looks good, especially when you're um, done with it. You want to make sure it's uh, appetizing to look at. So we count um, the second joint. This is the first, the second. We slice it. You might want to keep this. You can still use this for stock or soup. soup. Yes, correct. Same with the other side. There you go. So you're done. It's gonna look like this. We have here your hoisin, your garlic powder, your ginger powder, and your sugar. So these four will be mixed together, okay? So we're gonna mix that. It's gonna give a, a lot of flavor also, Robert, so. Not exactly a diet. Oh yeah. What we want to happen is to make a paste out of this. So you, can, you can add a little bit of vinegar if you want, just to make it a little bit runny. You have to be a little bit of a patient when it comes to this. So, so it's gonna look like that. So you wanna make sure the consistency is uh, like this, okay? So it's a paste. And you make sure the cavity is ready. Um, what you want to do, you want to slip this in just like that. It's going to be a little bit messy, but it's going to be worth it. Absolutely. All right, now next, you have your ginger here. What you want to do, you're going to cut this in half. You have two pieces, just throw it in there. A little bit more aroma. Scallions. It's gonna give it a, a more delicious smell, you know. And what you wanna do, you wanna grab, a, grab yourself a piece of barbecue stick. You wanna make sure the cavity is closed before you're gonna start poaching it or boiling it. There you go. You wanna press it a little bit. You wanna make sure it's okay. sealed. The duck is now sealed. Just like that. Uh, Andrew, so the, uh, the duck has been stuffed? Correct. What's the next step? Right, so we stuffed this already with your hoisin mixture. And then I got the, the wok ready also. It's gonna, it has boiling water already. So we're gonna make a mixture. Okay. This, process will, uh, this process will need vinegar, honey, and your star anise, and a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. Okay, sure. So we're gonna mix that in the water. Yes, sir. All right, we're gonna bring this here. It's gonna be a lot easier. And this is your slurry, which is your cornstarch and water. And two tablespoons of uh, your fresh lemon juice. So you're gonna need a wooden spoon. You wanna wait for the color to turn, uh, to turn a little bit dark. At this point, you can smell the aroma already. You can smell the star anise, the sweetness of the honey, the zest of the, the lemon. So right after we, we put the 
vinegar, your honey, it turns down the heat level automatically. So we want to make sure we're going to bring back the, the right. boiling temperature. Right. And, and we leave the duck in for, you say 20 seconds? Yes, the most is 20 seconds. We're going to soak it with the, this uh, mixture and then we're going to start hanging it for a couple of hours. Okay, so uh, Andrew, we have the uh, we have the mixture in the boiling water. It's boiling nicely. Correct. Next, we put in the slurry. Correct. That's 50/50 uh, water and cornstarch. Now, what's the purpose of the slurry? All right, um, the slurry. The purpose of this is we want to make sure that the meat is tender, so it helps and it gives a lot of flavor. Also, at the same time, so we're gonna add this now. We mix it. There we go. I think we're ready. Okay. I'm gonna slowly pour it in. But remember, if you put a slurry, the consistency of the mixture is gonna thicken. in. So that's what we're after. Right. So once it starts boiling, it's gonna thicken. The more it boils, the more it thickens. While we're waiting for that, we're gonna get the duck ready. A familiar smell is an old Hong Kong hand. Oh yeah. A familiar smell. All right, now the water is boiling. <coughs> I think we're ready for the duck. We're gonna start soaking this up. Same, just about 20 seconds, right? Yes, 20 seconds is the most. So you wanna soak this really as fast as you can. You wanna make sure you don't wanna burn your hand. And why so short the time? Uh, you don't wanna cook it all throughout, so you just want to uh, poach it to give it a perfect skin, right. consistency, the texture. Watch out, very hot. I'm going to put it in the bowl. And then we're ready to, to hang this. So it's going to be hanged for, for four to six hours. Now what happens during the hanging process? Why do you hang it for so long? See, we, we want to drip it out. The, the oil, um, the skin, you want a crispy skin after um, you hang it. So yes. we're gonna throw this inside the oven for a couple of minutes. Then uh, if you hang it uh, wet, it's not gonna give out a very good uh, skin texture. So it goes into the oven for? It goes there for a couple of minutes, 45 minutes, and then we, take, we turn it off. Okay. We let it sit there for 15 more minutes. Okay. Then we take it out. Right, so the, uh, the duck is now ready for uh, a long process of hanging. Correct. All the flavors. Correct. Good. Okay, so we're going to hang the duck now for how long? Six hours? Four to six hours. Four to six hours, that's a long yes. time. Okay, so uh, that's where we are at the moment. So we'll be right back after the break when uh, we will then go into the actual cooking process. Thank you. So we have the wrapper here, uh, uh, Andrew. What um, uh, what kind of wrapper is that for the Peking duck? Robert. So this is um, basically a basic um, flour tortilla. It's made of flour, olive oil, a little bit of salt. That's it. And so you just fry that? Yes. Uh, we, we, we heat it up with a, a pan, a little bit of olive oil. So right here, I prepared myself a, a medium-sized saute pan. You want to make sure you don't want um, a very high heat on the pan or else it's going to burn. Okay, but you can use other kinds of wrappers, can't you? Of course, or, uh, you, you can always use uh, pancakes, um, mandarin pancakes. There's a lot of uh, version for the wrappers, but this one is the basic. Right. You can always use this. So if that happens, you might want to turn uh, your fire a little bit. 
lower. You want to shake it from time to time just to make sure it's not going to stick on the pan. And then when the wrap is ready, we put in the uh, hoisin sauce. You put the hoisin, the cucumber, the scallions, the duck, then we wrap it and we're done. Delicious. comes the really important part, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. We have a very special guest with us today. We have our brother Dindo Maralit, who is the former Vice-Chancellor of the University of St. Vassal here in Bacolo, and now uh, President of St. Joseph's School, Vassal, and also something of a foodie, so we thought we would drag him out of his office and uh, have him uh, Join me and Andrew in tasting the Peking duck. So, Andrew, over to you and welcome, Great. brother. Uh, let's do this. So we take the pancake. Pancake. And then we put a little bit of sauce here. Sauce in. Just like that. Scallions. Scallion. And the cucumber. Oh, you want a little bit of yep, cucumber? cucumber. Sorry. There we go. And the Brother Dindo, first one to you. Okay, I'll just use my hand. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, indeed. Very good. Very good. I Very think good. Right. Go Cheers. Cheers. Andrew, are you having any? I will. Oh, okay. You cooked it. <laughs> Reminds me of my Hong Kong days. Delicious. Good. Actually, everything has a good flavor and consistency with texture. Yeah. Even bread. I mean, honestly, honestly, the bread is actually good. Thank you. Yeah. And it goes well with the duck. So there we are. That's another episode of uh, Culinary Travels over for another time. And uh, I'd like to thank Chef uh, Andrew. You're very, very much welcome, much Robert. For uh, all your thank hard you. work. Uh, Brother Dindo here for being such an expert taster. And uh, that concludes our, uh, our show for today. So look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for watching. And uh, this is uh, Robert Har Chef Robert Harlan on behalf of uh, everyone at the crew of Culinary Travels saying thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. There you go.